Gary, thanks very much for joining me. Now, I've got to start by saying congratulations on your Digital Pioneer Award. Was it something you were expecting? Well, thanks, Paul. Um, I'm fortunate to have been in the position where I've worked on some very exciting projects, um, projects that I'm very, very passionate about, and for me have really made a difference to patients and clinicians and the companies that I've worked for. Um, so you never embark on these projects uh, thinking of this kind of recognition, um, but when you get it, then yeah, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't something that's, that feels really, really good. Now, there must have been some pretty stiff competition. So what do you think swung it for you? Well, I've worked on a number of exciting projects, as I've said last year, and I know a number of my colleagues within industry have worked on some other very exciting projects. The one that I understood really swung things was a, a campaign that we did around ADHD to the public. One of the components was on YouTube, um, and that component where it allowed engagement, discussions, members of the public putting comments around ADHD, some positive, some anti the condition, uh, and where we had that transparency and openness, I think that, that really swung it. Now, you recently moved to the service side after a long career with Janssen. During your time at Janssen, what changes did you see happen with respect to digital engagement? For me, Janssen were a company that had been great to work for because they were never content with standing still. Regards digital, when I started there, much of the communication to patients and clinicians was in the form of paper-based communications, mailings, patient leaflets. That moved very much to digital communication to patients and clinicians, but it was very often one way. And then that started to move again to digital communication that's more of a dialogue to patients and to clinicians, so getting that two-way approach. That's broadly how I've seen it move. What were the highlights for you of your time at Janssen? The big highlight, and this isn't to take away from anything else that I've done, was the ADHD YouTube video campaign. That really allowed discussions from the public and patients on, online on the YouTube channel where they could really highlight their views, offer opinions, whether it was positive towards ADHD, negative, positive to the idea of medicating children or negative, and all those comments were allowed. There was very little that we couldn't post. And to have that sort of discussion and that transparency is definitely the way that pharma needs to go. And I believe that really influences people more and engages them more than just having pharma saying, OK, everything we do is good. Here's the top three key messages, why, and blasting it out there. Now, it seems like social media is a real buzzword at the moment, and it means different things to different people. What does it mean to you? For me, it's, such, it's become such a broad term because pretty much most of the things that we, we see on, the web, on websites now and online um, are social. Um, so it's certainly not just from a pharma perspective, it's not just thinking about Twitter, Facebook and YouTube, but actually thinking more about how pharma engages more with clinicians, with, with patients, so how they listen more and enter a dialogue more with them. So that's what social means. It's much broader than just thinking about um, applications or, or websites. Now, the industry is very much finding its way in the digital space. What do you see as the biggest challenges for pharma when they're engaging online? The biggest challenge for me is around making sure that everything that pharma does is aligned with the strategy. So not getting excited by things that are new, digital and online, but really working out what they're trying to achieve, where, what the, where the patients are, where the doctors are, where they're trying to get them to, um, and then choosing the right tactics. And they may be online and they may be digital, but choosing them accordingly rather than just jumping straight in with a, with a solution. I deliberately haven't mentioned regulations because I feel that there's so much that pharma can do and often we hide behind the barrier, the perceived barrier of regulations. Pharma does have responsibilities, but there's very little that we can't do in the online space. So it's a case of getting out there and actually going and doing it.